transformations of exponential functions. This is going to follow basically a lot of the same rules that we have done before when we have transformed the trig functions or we've transformed uh, a quadratic function. It's just taking the original graph, your original points, and deciding where the new points are going to be by applying whatever the rules for the transformations are. So let's get started. If I have a parent function, and my parent function is f of x equals b raised to the x power. If I want to move that vertically, then my new uh, formula, my, my new equation is going to be b raised to the x plus c. I'm going to move it up or down, b to the x minus c, c units depending upon you know whether whether it's plus or minus. So it's if it's plus c, it's going to move up c units. If it's minus c, it's going to move everything down c units. So that means you're going to take the y coordinate, keep the x coordinate the same, and move the y coordinate up c or down c. Okay. How about horizontal, back and forth? Okay. In order to do that, we're going to manipulate the x this time. The x has to do with the horizontal shift. So that means I'm going to either add or subtract c from my exponent. So I'll have b to the x plus c or b to the x minus c. And remember, everything always seems to work or works backwards um, when you're dealing with the x term because you want x plus c to be equal to zero. So if, uh, if we have x plus c, we're going to move it to the left c units. If it's going to be x minus c, we're going to move, move it to the uh, right by c units. Okay, a reflection. A reflection, if we have negative b raised to the x power, that's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. It's going to be a horizontal flip, which means if we start off like this and we want to put a negative sign in front of the entire thing, minus b raised to the x power, it's going to flip it down. So it's going to be the mirror reflection over the x-axis. On the other hand, if we have b to the negative x, then we're going to have a reflection over the y-axis. And we talked about this in the last video, um, 2 to the x and 2 to the minus x. So if we, have, if we start off with that and we reflect it over the y-axis, we're going to have that, and it's going to intersect there at 0, 1. Okay, example 4. We want to use 3 to the x to graph 3 to the x plus 1. So we're going to do this by plotting some points or, or figuring out some points. So we're going to do, we're going to choose these points for x and we're going to solve for y. So we'll have 1 ninth, 1 third, 1, 3, and 9. If I plot those points, I get my little purple jobs here, and if I connect them, that's what my graph is going to look like. Of course, it's going to go farther in the left direction. I just didn't, and I, and I should put my uh, arrows on it. So now to find my new function, I'm going to move everything one to the left. I'm going to keep my y value the same, and I'm going to move my x value one to the left. That means I'll have that little point, that little point, that point. Take each, just go to each one of your points and move it one to the left, and there's my new graph. Or I could just take the x coordinate and uh, subtract one from it. So my first point would be minus three one ninth, so on and so forth. Okay, so go ahead and do your checkpoint number four. Okay, example number five, use the graph of f of x equals two to the x to, to obtain the graph of g of x is two to the x minus three. So this is going to be a vertical shift. And if I go ahead and choose my points again, and solve, and then plot, I have a graph that looks like this. Now, in order to uh, do my shift or my transformation, I'm going to take each one of my points. I'm going to keep the same x-coordinate. I'm just going to shift the point down 3. So that's going to give me these points. Okay, And since I've gone down 3, I've also had to change my horizontal asymptote down 3, so it goes from y equals 0 to y equals negative 3. 
So go ahead and do your checkpoint number five. We have a few additional transformations. These are a little harder to see um, from the uh, exponential functions, but we can still we can still talk about them. A vertical stretch or shrink. That means either stretching up and down in a vertical direction. If if my new function is g of x is c, a constant, times b to the x. If c is greater than 1, it's going to be a stretch. If c lies between 0 and 1, in other words, it's a positive um, fraction less than 1, it's going to shrink. A horizontal stretch, g of x is going to be b to the c times x. This time we're going to multiply our exponent by a constant. And if c is greater than 1, it will shrink. And if c is between 0 and 1, it will stretch. Please notice that that's kind of backwards from what it is for the vertical stretch. Because, and it's because we're working with the x uh, component. So there you have it, my friends. Uh, pretty simple. Go ahead and finish up your checkpoints and your homework, and I'll see you in class. Goodbye.